guide you on an exclusive tour and personally answer all your pressing questions. Discover your true calling as the Holy Spirit leads you in worship and ignites your inner passion. This transformative weekend is designed to give Salvationists a glimpse of the processes, facilities, and surrounding community that will train them to become a Salvation Army officer. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. Take a step towards fulfilling your purpose by signing up for the 730 Weekend today. To learn more or register, visit 730days.org now.
How about that Southern Territorial Youth Band? They're all right. Hey, y'all. How are you? I'm getting the hang of that, aren't I? That's not too bad. I'm delighted to welcome you to the welcome for the Champions of the Mission session of cadets. That's right. Those who have been here will already know that we've been feasting this week on the bread of life. And it's been good. I'm new to Bible conference, <laughs> and I've had a great time, an absolute blast, actually. But I understand that this meeting, the welcome, has not previously taken place during Bible conference. So what a privilege it is for us to be able to celebrate the arrival of this new session of cadets while we're wrapping up a great week of Bible conference. It's as if we're asking God to put the finishing touches on an already wonderful week. So this meeting is about worshiping our great and mighty God in joyous celebration. Celebration for all that has taken place this week and celebration of this next session of cadets. Psalm 19 says, wherever I am, wherever I go, I can sense something of the power of God. The grandeur of the mountains, the vastness of the oceans, the breathtaking wonder of interstellar space. All this proclaims the glory and majesty of God. God's voice can be heard. He makes his presence known throughout the world. And he is here with us. So listen for his voice. Let's celebrate. Please remain seated and join me in welcoming the cadets of the Champions of the Mission Session. From the Arkansas, Oklahoma Division, under the leadership of Lieutenant Colonels Dean and Pam Henson, with their candidate secretary, Captain Elise Leborowitz. From Norman, Oklahoma, Cadets Ryan Thorson and Cadet Sarisa Thorson. From the Georgia Division, under the leadership of Majors Al and Teresa Newsom, with their candidate secretary, Captain Dominique Darby. From Atlanta International Corps, Cadet Chelsea Carter. And also from Atlanta International Corps, Cadet Danielle Barrington. From the Kentucky Tennessee Division, under the leadership of Majors Tom and Julianne Loudon, with their candidate secretary, Captain Jay Needham. From the Owensboro Corps, Cadet Jeremiah Crawford. From the Memphis Purdue Corps, Cadet Lauren DeSarduin. And from the Louisville Sanders Mission, Cadet Jeremy Worf and Cadet Jillian Worf. And from the Memphis Croc, Cadet Patrick Lewandowski. From the Potomac Division, under the leadership of Lieutenant Colonels Allen and Fiona Hopper, with their candidate secretary, Captain Lorena Crawford. From the Richmond Citadel Corps, Cadet Richard Lee. And from the Hampton Roads Croc, Cadet Daniel Nolan and Cadet Melanie Nolan. And from the Texas Division, under the leadership of Lieutenant Colonels Art and Ann Penhale, with their candidate secretary, Colonel Paula Johnson. From George 
now, Cadet Kathy Farmer. From Waco, Texas, Cadet Chris Swinney. And from Waxahachie, Cadet John Osborne. And Cadet Michelle Osborne. And from the San Antonio Center of Hope, Cadet Brian Shea. Cadet Donna Shea. Let's give a great big round of applause to the champions of the mission session. Proclaim the good news that saves. Publish his glorious deeds among the nations and tell everyone about the amazing things he does. And he, we know he has done amazing things this week and that he has amazing things planned for the champions of the mission. Will you stand and sing with us as we uh, sing praises to his name this evening?
wait your prayer we long we wait it is on behalf of the candidates department and the Southern Territory to present to you today an outstanding group of 18 committed men and women who have joined their fellow cadets from around the world as the champions of the mission session. These followers of Christ have responded to God's call and come from the four corners of the territory to win souls and to serve others as officers in the Salvation Army. God has prepared this session in many ways for their service as officers through their journey of faith, life experiences, education, occupations, and core involvement. Today, it is my pleasure to introduce to you these fine men and women and tell you a little bit about who they are. 18 is the average age of their conversion. 11 out of the 18 are first generation salvationists. This session also includes three, sec three second generation salvationists, one fourth generation salvationists, two fifth-generation salvationists, and one seventh-generation salvationists. Six are Corps Cadet graduates, seven are children of soldiers, and seven are children of officers. The champions of the mission session have degrees in various fields that include science, the arts, early childhood care, and human development and family studies, emergency and disaster management, math, theater, ministries, psychology, management, social work, counseling, secondary education, travel agent, electrical engineering, cosmetology, and agriculture. The average years as a soldier are 11, and they have served in various leadership positions in their local corps. The average age among the session is 37, with the oldest being 54 and the youngest 25. These cadets bring with them six children on campus. As I call their names, please hold your applause until the end. From the Arkansas and Oklahoma Division, Norman, 
Cadets Ryan and Sarisa Thorson. From the Georgia Division, Atlanta International, Cadet Chelsea Carter. Cadet Danielle Farrington. From the Kentucky and Tennessee Division, Owensboro, Cadet Jeremiah Crawford. Memphis, Purdue, Cadet Lauren Desartwin. Louisville Sanders Mission, Cadets Jeremy and Jillian Wharf. Memphis Croc, Cadet Patrick Lewandowski. From the Potomac Division, Richmond Citadel, Cadet Richard Lee. Hampton Roads Croc, Cadets Daniel and Melanie Nolan. From the Texas Division, Georgetown, Cadet Kathy Former. Waxahachie, Cadets John and Michelle Osborne. San Antonio, San Antonio Center of Hope, Cadets Brian and Donna Shea. Waco, Cadet Christopher Sweeney. Please stand and join me in welcoming the Champions of the Mission session. It's my privilege this evening to receive this flag. Thank you, Captain. This really is a symbolic moment in the cadet welcome ceremony. 
symbolic because of it, what this flag represents. Of course, we understand the red, the yellow, and the blue. But we also understand the sacred symbol of the flag flies in every core in the Southern Territory. It flies this evening in eight divisional headquarters. It flies in every chapel in every ARC from El Paso all the way down to Miami and as far up as West Virginia. If you drive into the EBC, the Evangelism Booth College, you'll see it flying there too. It's a welcome. It's a banner of love. It represents hope and light in a dark world. This will be, and it is today, a sessional flag. It has more symbolic meaning to this session than anyone seated here this evening. Because I would suggest to you that this is also a session unifier. Look at these 18 beautiful and handsome cadets. You heard where they come from, all over the territory. And so they have formed a session. Eighteen have become one. And the world today needs a little more unification. And we're certainly happy today that this beautiful symbol represents the champions of the mission session. Let me also acknowledge that for many corps across our territory, on the Sunday after they drove onto your campus, Major, there was a noticeable absence. There were Sunday school teachers no longer there. Someone perhaps to make sure the children uh, got safely to the core. Or maybe there was uh, a home league secretary or, or maybe someone who played in the band and that chair is now empty. I'd like to acknowledge your sacrifice, your giving, and your surrender. It's not easy to turn loose of your finest. But I would suggest this evening that you've not turned loose of anything that you've only given away what God has called. And of this I'm certain, God will replenish. He is a God of this great kingdom. But I just wanted to express my appreciation to you. Sometimes it's easier to hold on, but yet you have freely given. And so our, our prayer is that the Lord would fill those seats and those spaces in your hearts. And now it's my privilege this evening to hand over this flag to our training principal, who now has one session of people who are well saved, sanctified, sacred, who love Jesus with all their hearts, Major. And we're going to entrust them to you and your staff, because in just two short years, you're going to need to be a miracle maker. You're going to need to take these young people who are precious, who come well equipped, and who are excited about the mission of the Salvation Army. They are. And so, sir, I now hand this session over to you. Thank you, Commissioner. Champions of the mission. This is a unique flag because it bears your name. There's not another Champions of the Mission flag flying in the USA Southern Territory. This is it. It's a flag that you will follow into chapels and auditoriums, and dare I say, 
you'll follow it into the streets during these next two years for spiritual moments and spiritual warfare that will take place. It will fly in assignment services. It will fly at appointment services. It will fly at your commencement and at your commissioning. And we trust that when it's time for you to retire, you'll retire under these colors as well. Cadet Jeremy Worf, you've been chosen to bear these colors. I challenge you in your session to honor what they represent in salvationism, in the blood and fire, in the holiness of God. And this evening, it's my privilege to present this flag to you for its first public posting. Many prayers have been prayed over you. Many prayers will continue to be prayed over you. When I opened the program and I saw your faces, it was the first time that I would see you in this way. And then when you entered in, I felt the Spirit of the Lord here. His presence is strong. His goodness is all across this room. We are all in for you and all for Jesus. We praise God for you, for his calling upon your life. In the days ahead, prayer will be very, very important, as it already is, but even more so. So as a family of God this evening, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer, amen? We're going to pray for the champions of mission this session. We're going to pray for our territory, that God, the Holy Spirit, will once again fill every corner of our territory. We're going to uplift these beautiful 18 who have said yes. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. God has brought us here to welcome, to celebrate, to consecrate the champions of the mission session. We do not know entirely all that went into making this day possible, but we do know that God has brought this new session here. He made a way even when the hurdles seem too great to overcome. And we thank him for this, his faithfulness. We're going to pray for them. We're going to pray for the mission of our territory, 
For apart from God, we can do nothing. But with God, we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. So we need the Lord to fill every part of us tonight with his spirit. We need him to send us his love, a dying love, a love that fills for the whole world. And he is sending us from here tomorrow. It's coming. Tomorrow we will leave these sacred grounds and we will go back home. That we will go changed. We will go different than when we came. That we need to be people in need of the fragrance of Christ. There will be people who will be longing to sense that, to take in that aroma of what you've experienced. And here you are tonight, that sweet aroma of love, his holy love for all the world. Shall we pray, family? Jesus, we pray that you you, Jesus, would help us spread your sweet fragrance wherever we go, that, Lord, our lives would be a beautiful and a sweet offering to you, an offering of love, of peace, of reconciliation, of forgiveness, and of joy. Lord, we pray for the champions of the mission session, Father, as they prepare to go into all the world and to preach the gospel, would their lives be a sweet sacrifice drawing others to you? Og Jesus, du har lovet, at du er med os alle dage ind til verdens ende. Vi takker dig, Jesus, og vi priser dit navn. I pray this prayer in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will flood us with your spirit. Lord, that you will pour in the fullness of your life within us. So that, Lord, as we eat of the table that you prepared for us, Lord, that we will have an overflowing of your spirit, Father. So that when we encounter others, Lord, what they eat of of our life is a direct reflection of what we've seen in you. Lord, that your spirit will pour out your love, your peace as we go into different hurdles and challenges, Lord. Father, with the spirit of long-suffering, suffering long for you, but yet without wavering in faith, because your spirit is made perfect in our weakness, and what they eat when they encounter us is an overflowing of your spirit, that they may have hope to run their race a little better. We bless you and we honor you now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father God, our mighty one, at, the whole, at this solemn moment, Lord God, we ask you, penetrate and possess our whole being so utterly that our lives may only be of radiance of yours. Oh Lord, we surrender to you, Lord God. Everything, all the material belongings, our giftings, our time, talents, even our children are all yours, Lord God. And at this moment, even Lord, especially we surrender our willingness. We will follow your plan not just our plan Lord God oh Lord even though we want to and desire to surrender to you sometime Lord because of our old nature it is hard to surrender to you without the help of the Holy Spirit Lord we cannot fully surrender to you so Lord we lift this cadets, new cadets to you, Lord God. Every day, let them start their day in the
the presence of you and surrender to you, Lord God, and plunge themselves to the blood of Jesus Christ that is our power, Lord, our weakness and our surrender is your power, Lord God. So pour out your Holy Spirit every day. 하나님 감사합니다. 하나님 이 시간 하나님께서 아주 정말 귀한 하나님의 또 종들을 이곳에 보내 주셨는데 하나님 저희들의 힘을 의지하지 않고 온전히 하나님만 의지하며 나아갈 때 하나님 정말 비록 숫자는 작을지라도 하나님 정말 다윗처럼 골리앗을 이긴 다윗처럼 하나님 역사하시는 놀라운 아버지 일꾼들 될수 있도록 주님께서 인도해 주실 것을 믿고 감사드리며 이 모든 말씀 우리 주 예수 그리스도 이름으로 기도했습니다. 아멘. O light of the world, shine through us, and so be in us that every soul we encounter may feel your presence in our soul. Let them look up and see no longer us. but only you, Jesus. O light of the world, you have shined in our darkness. You have shined and we can never be the same. Lord, you shined in the lives of those, our friends, right behind us, Lord, and in front of us. You have shined gloriously in their lives. And tonight we see your light shining through, beaming through them. O Lord, bless us and help us to stay close to you. We want more than anything to be a beacon of your light, a beacon of your love, and a beacon of hope in a world that needs you more than ever because you have shined in the darkness and the darkness will never defeat you, will never overcome you. So we shine, we shine for you today, Jesus. Jesus, stay with us, and we shall begin to shine as you shine, so to shine as to be light to others. The light, O oh Jesus, will be all from you. None of it will be ours. It will be you shining on others through us. Let us thus praise you in the way you love best, by shining on those around us. Let us reflect your holy character, Lord, to a world desperately in need to see you. Let us lift up that blood and fire banner, Lord, as we advance your mission into this world. Let us, Father, reflect Jesus. Let these champions of your mission reflect him and let the world see in us the possibility, the holy possibility of what you can do by your boundless grace, Lord. Let us be united. Let us be sanctified. Let us reflect Jesus. For thy mission make us holy. For thy glory make us thine. Sanctify each moment fully. Lord, fill our lives with love divine. Father, this is our prayer for the champions of mission session and for each one in this room and beyond these doors, Father, and throughout this world. Bless us, Lord. Use these 18 who have answered your call. Use us, Father. We thank you as well for the defenders of justice. Bless them, Father, we pray. Help us all, Father, to live worthy of your calling. And Father, we ask you to form us more and more into your image and your likeness. There's a lost and dying world, Father, who needs the love of Jesus. You've given your church an assignment to fulfill here on earth. Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole world. May we do this as champions for others and may it be done in love. In the secret of thy presence and in the hiding of thy power, Let me, let us love and serve thee every consecrated hour. And in your name, 
the lovely and strong name of Jesus, we pray in all God's children. Amen. We're going to sing a beautiful chorus, one that might be familiar to you and others very new, but I pray that it will speak to the very recesses of your heart. Look at these words. Love, I ask for love. I claim a dying love like thine, a love that fills for all the world. Savior, give me a love like thine. We're going to sing it, and then we'll invite you to stand. Champions, this will be for you. This will be for us, but let these words soak into your hearts this evening. Christ today, not ju just 730 days from now. We affirm that we will be engaged in our mission, making service to others a priority. We value the Salvationists throughout the Southern Territory. We will find ways to celebrate God's redeeming love through our service and worship. We will seek ways for all of God's children to join together in praise and thanksgiving. As we share the good news of the gospel, we recognize its power for salvation and transformation through the power of the Holy Spirit. We affirm to take responsibility for the discipling of our soldiers, young and old. We will equip, grow, and empower our present and future Salvation Army. We will defend and serve the poor, the lonely, and the lost. We will seek biblical justice when needed. We will express generosity and participate in God's redemptive story for the whole world. We will remember our mission to meet human needs in Christ's name, without discrimination. 
discrimination. We are not alone in this mission. We stand on the shoulders of those who have gone before us. Their legacy is proof of God's faithfulness. We have the ability to see into a future where we all serve under our blood and fire banner of God's transformation. Each of us can be an influence of transformation right where God has placed us, in our home, our core, and our world. May God be glorified as we serve him through our calling. We are champions of the mission. Earlier this week, Commissioner Zeigelhart reflected on a tragedy which took place in Nigeria as officer colleagues were traveling home from an officer's councils, and as it happened, it was the councils that the Eigelharts had been privileged to lead. One van full of officers was in a terrible accident, and 12 individuals were killed. The amazing United States Southern Territory stepped up and we were able to pay for the funerals of the victims of that tragedy. And 5,000 gathered as they mourned and celebrated those 12 lives. We want to share a video which has been received from the Nigeria Territory. Commissioners Kennedy and Donna Agwahant and the entire USA Southern Territory, we greet you from Nigeria Territory. Commissioner Tracy and Ali, we want to thank you so much for coming to Nigeria to be our guests for our officers' councils. I want to use this medium to appreciate both of you and USA Southern Territory for your generosity in being helpful to our territory in such a difficult time like this, we are not enough to express the gratitude in our hearts for all we have benefited from your territory within this short period. Firstly, the officers are so happy and full of gratitude over the donation from your territory, which made the officers councils of 2023 a dream come true. You might wish to know that officers of Nigeria Territory have longed over the years for certain opportunity to come together for the purpose of fellowship with one another. Secondly, we thank you for the impact of your wonderful Bible expository Amen. teachings from both of you, which bless the officers. Yes. We will not fail to appreciate the gifts and leadership materials from Dell Bible Institute, which you paid for our offices. The impact of your territory's support to the success of the officers' councils cannot be easily forgotten. Yes. As we continue to witness 
the effects on the rise in Ministry of Officers. We anticipate a significant growth among our officers as a result of the effects of the Officers' Council's impact. And men, thirdly, the officers and soldiers of Nigeria territory remain grateful to USA South Intelligent for the financial support to conduct the massive federal service of 11 officers, a soldier, and a baby that were promoted to glory in the ghastly road accident on their way back from the officers' councils. Such generosity is first of its kind in the history of Nigeria territory. We say thank you so much, Commissioners Kelly and Donna. General Dead and your territory, just like Apostle Paul prayed in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. My God shall continue to supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. We very much appreciate your time to us here. Your support has been a major source of comfort and consolation as it helped a long way to lessen the burden of the irreparable loss and the unbearable pain we went through. Please continue to pray for us as we are now trying to see how we are going to assist the children who were left with their education. Thank the Lord bless you, God. Yes, we and also bless USA Southern Territory. Hallelujah. Commissioner Zeigelhart set forth a challenge to the territory to make contributions to a fund for the 21 children who were left orphaned because of the loss of life. The children will live out their lives with other family, but it will be difficult for those families who already have children of their own. So this fund will be set up to support the schooling of these children. Now, the commissioner uh, elected me to be the contact person and the person to collect the commitments. And so all through this week, there have been folks approaching me, um, and I want to share with you that we have already collected $46,000. Tonight, as we will receive the offering it will go toward the support fund for these children. And I urge you to give generously, as you always do. And our prayer will be that God uses your gifts to aid these precious children. I'd like to invite um, to pray. And then um, as the offering is taken, our territorial youth band will be playing the offertory. Father, our hearts have been pricked hearing of the tragedy which took the lives of our colleagues in Nigeria. And tonight, we ask you, Lord, to draw near to those families who continue to mourn. We pray for the territorial leaders, Commissioners Daniel and Tracy Casuso, as they minister to their officers, the soldiers, and the friends through this great loss. Please pour out your spirit of comfort and peace 
upon our colleagues in Nigeria. Bless them as they continue to serve you faithfully. We lift our offerings to you this evening and ask that you bless and multiply them, even as you multiplied the loaves and the fish. And we thank you, Lord, that we have the ability to give and make a difference in the lives of others. Make us always mindful of what you have faithfully given to us. I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. terrific, aren't they? Um, if you'll open your Bibles this evening, the scripture is taken from uh, the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 10 to 19. Acts, the ninth chapter, 
verses 10 to 19. And I will be reading from the New International Version. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called him in a vision. Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. And the Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he's done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, go, <laughs> go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. May the Lord bless the reading of his word this night.
don't these guys look sharp? I mean, really, don't they look nice? You can applaud. You can applaud. You, uh, from sitting on the front of the platform, it's the most exciting place to be. Because I can see your faces. And when the cadets stand, you smile. And when they sing, you sing along with them. And they, they are a reflection of you, your hearts. I'd like to uh, recognize the divisional leaders who are here who have supported, your divisional candidate secretary who's worked for a year or more getting this beautiful fruit uh, to uh, the Evangelism Booth College, so, so thank you very much. I'd, I'd like to welcome those who are watching online. We wish you were here. So go ahead and make plans for next year. It's never too early. You, you know that if you don't get that, cap, that special cabin, somebody's going to get in on it before they leave, and you're going to wish you had it. So come on. Uh, unless Jesus comes, we expect to see somewhere around 50 here next year. So let's just go ahead and pray for that, right? Interesting fact, over here somewhere is the, is the personnel secretary. Sorry for moving around. We prayed for 50 cadets, you remember? And we have 18. Now, surely you're not disappointed. Because let me tell you how big God is. Before the year, uh, we, before we came to this point, at, at territorial headquarters, there were sergeants who came on board. There were officers who left officership for various reasons and then came back on board. And then these guys show up. And when you do all that math, God gave us 51 people to fill those corps. Amen. <laughs> now, that doesn't count in my math. I still want 50. <laughs> but we'll take credit where we can get it and give God all the glory. Amen. It's been a fantastic uh, Bible conference. I've never, ever been disappointed in a Bible conference. I'm always, uh, I always leave encouraged. And our, our prayer is that you will as well. And particularly ending on this kind of a note is certainly encouraging to me. And uh, so it's good to have you all here. You've officially been welcomed. This is the last one. So um, we'll, see you at the, we'll see you in the classroom. I'm looking forward to it. They just look so nice. I get the privilege of uh, accepting candidates. And I get to see their videos and their paperwork. And they are phenomenal. They are amazing. They are so gifted, educated, dedicated, loving. They love Jesus. And I'm, tell, I, I'm, I'm close to commissioning them right now. If I just had that book, I could probably do it. But, but, but next time, in a couple of years. So you read the scripture, right? Acts. Thank you, Colonel Sadler. And by the way, you are no longer a visitor. You are now a Southern Territory officer. So welcome to the ranks. <laughs> she still struggles with UNs and a few other things, but be patient. We'll get her there. It may take a year or two. Acts is a story that you know quite well. I know that you do. Uh, Saul's conversion, this beautiful moment. It's, it's actually a crazy moment. It's a, it's a magical moment. It's, it's a moment really too difficult for us to comprehend. I think even Saul couldn't really understand what was happening to him on that road to Damascus. And I want to spend just a moment or two on that dusty road this evening. But I want to get to a point sooner than later so you just kind of buckle up over here if you don't mind. And uh, we'll, we will get there. We heard this week that when there's a clash of environments, the weaker must bow to the stronger. 
Certainly that's what happened on that road to Damascus. No question of what happened. This, this moment, this crisis encounter that Paul had with Jesus that radically altered his life. And I can say to you without question, though it may not have been a road to Damascus, all 18 of these cadets have had that crisis moment. Amen? Give me an amen. amen. Oh, they're so good. I know they have. I've read your testimony. I've heard you share your testimonies. And I have no question that God the Holy Spirit has done a new work in you. If you could change your name, you would. Saul to Paul. I wish sometimes I could have changed my name. Because of what God has done in my life. I'm no longer that person. A new person. A new creation. You know, Paul was a Pharisee. And he was so convicted that he wanted to eradicate Christianity uh, as he knew it and as it was in those early days. And he needed this overpowering experience to change this heart of stone into the heart that was pumping with the blood of Jesus. And it was going to take this Damascus Road experience for Saul to have that crisis moment. Aren't you glad God didn't have to do that in your life like he did Saul? The consequences of that meeting on that road that day changed Saul from a murderous villain to a champion for Christ. Also on that road and in that text, there's another name mentioned. Ananias. Did you, did you notice that? I want you to kind of write that name down because I think this is an important aspect of this particular story that resonates in my heart. And I think in less than two years, it will resonate in yours. Ananias, it was a common name. In fact, in the book of Acts, the name Ananias is mentioned three times. And I'm sure that you're probably familiar with those. The first one was connected to his wife, Sapphira. Remember that? They sold some property. And things didn't work out so well. They weren't fully truthful. And on two separate occasions, first, Ananias died on the spot. Then if you remember, Sapphira came a few minutes later, or sometime later, and told the same lie, and she died on the spot. So the name Ananias didn't start off so well in a book of Acts. And if you quickly jump to Acts 23, you'll see another Ananias who was the high priest who commanded that Paul, for whatever reason, be hit right in the mouth. It says it right there in your Bible. And he he, he didn't have such a good reputation either. He was known to be ruthless and, and corrupt and an enemy to the Jews. So this is strike two if your name is Ananias. Fortunately for them, number three steps up to the plate. And now here we are in chapter 9. And Ananias has this profound relationship with Paul. Now, you know Ananias was living in Damascus, the capital city. He's known already as the disciple of Jesus. We don't know his encounter. We don't know his story all we know is what the Bible says, and by the, the Bible says he's a disciple, and we know that's a follower of Jesus already. And so by the time Jesus spoke to Ananias, he had already heard about this villain Saul. The people in Damascus were warned. I could imagine, I don't know if you could, If I were a Christian in Damascus and I heard that Saul was coming to my house, every alarm would have gone on. Every bolt would have been bolted to that door. I would have been tempted to take down my Christian symbols so that he wouldn't know that this is the house of a believer. I would have been very careful with who I was talking to because certainly there would have been spies in the camp. Ananias had every reason to be very concerned. In fact, to be very afraid. I don't know how long it's been since you had 
a murderer come to your house. I felt like living in Johannesburg any moment somebody could have walked in. And I'm not kidding. One night about 2 o'clock in the morning, our alarm goes off. And uh, there's no weapon in my house except a 7-iron. And if you know how I play golf, you know anybody that would came in would have been safe. <laughs> there was no weapon. 2 o'clock in the morning, our routine was Donna ran into the bathroom and locked that door. And there was me in the 7-iron waiting to see where the motion detector was going off. You've been there? Not in Johannesburg you hadn't been. You unlock that door, and your heart's racing, and you're thinking, could this be it? Maybe that's how Ananias and the early Christians must have felt to know that Saul was coming to town. And so we can't just drift through this portion of Scripture without being impacted by the story. That's one of the things I've appreciated about this week. The stories that you've read many times just come to life again. That's the beauty of God's word. I suspect that Ananias was the original Terminator. He was coming to kill, steal, and destroy Saul. Saul was on his way. And Ananias hears the Lord call his name in verse 10. And I love his response. It is simply two words. Yes, Lord. Now it could have been, here I am. It could have been like your cell phone, hello. Could have been any kind of response like that. It could have been like the boy Samuel. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. But no. Ananias' response is, yes, Lord. You see, he doesn't know the question that's being asked. And the answer is yes. And I just want to encourage you as cadets that when a training principal asks, your answer is yes, before you even know what the question really is, you'll, you'll serve yourself well. Take it from somebody who found out the hard way. Yes. Now, what's the question? In an unexpected moment, Ananias becomes a reluctant champion of the mission. It wasn't his thing. He wasn't supposed to be. And obviously we find out that Paul became the champion of the mission. I mean, if you've traveled at all, some of you I know that you have many times, and you've seen those icons in churches that are a 1,000 years old, and it's Paul. Everywhere, all over the world, you'll see his photo or his picture or his icon. How many times have you seen Ananias? But yet you tell me who's the most important person in the story. Because surely without an Ananias, this story wouldn't have been a Paul. And so I started thinking about that. And I wondered if there's Pauls on this platform. But I suspect there's probably more Ananiases on the platform. And there is a difference. And maybe we can just look at that for a moment because I think it may be important to us. You see, you can't underestimate the ministry of an Ananias. There have been untold numbers of reluctant champions in modern day Christianity. And I want to just share a couple, and I think some of you will recognize some of these. Working in a shoe store together... Edward Kimball witnessed to D.L. Moody and won him to the Lord. Now, you tell me which one was the champion of the faith. This week, if you listened carefully, and I'm sure that you did, Susanna Wesley, the Holy Ghost-inspired mother 
of Charles and John. Now you tell me, who's the champion of the mission? Some of you who live in around North Carolina may remember this story. Mordecai Ham preached the night that Billy Graham was saved. Now you tell me who's the champion of the mission. Or maybe you know this one, and this is the last one. Don't worry, we, we could go the rest of the night, but these people are ready for ice cream or something. I don't know what they're waiting on, but they're getting excited. If I said the name Bramwell Booth, I think most of us would recognize the name. General Bramwell Booth went to Berlin, and he led a series of evangelistic meetings. Thousands of people showed up, and in one of those meetings, there was a young twin boy who attended. He was eager to participate in the meetings, and the record shows that he may have been the youngest person in those meetings. And he was impressed with the general's face, his countenance, his excitement. He was impressed with the enthusiasm of the people in those meetings. In fact, it really kind of altered his life as a young boy. He was influenced by General Bramwell. His name was Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And so you tell me. Who's the champion of the mission? Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to get personal. I want to remind you that champions don't always wear capes. Most don't wear a title belt or win awards. In fact, more times than not, their names get lost somewhere down the corridor of history. Who is your champion in your faith? You could name a person. You could name probably many people. Who influenced your walk with God? Well, I could quickly name a few, and I'm hesitant to do it, but I'm going to risk it. Mary and Harold Vincent. Some of you will recognize that name. Herb and Mary Frills. Few of you will recognize those names. Every Corps officer I ever had, names like Woodcock, Bledsoe, Tommy Thompson, Oliot. Names like Uncle Milt Survey in Nashville, Tennessee. Bob Bird, who mentored me for five years. I didn't know he was mentoring me. I just thought I was getting a free breakfast. Some of you will recognize that, those names. Countless others who have influenced my life, and to be honest, cadets, many are sitting here in front of you this evening, and I suspect some are watching online. These people will never win the other's award. Most will never win the order of the founder. But they were the founders of my faith. And I know that you could count many Ananiases in your life. Champions of the mission session. That's, that's you, in case you hadn't figured it out yet. I'm going to be slow because I need it to be that way. On your commissioning day, you will not be issued a cape nor a crown under your tunic will not be an S, and you will not receive a utility belt, belt with a bat on it. So just prepare yourself for disappointment. But what you will receive is the Word of God. What you will take with you is the fire of the Holy Spirit, and that's enough. You don't need anything special. You just need a strong relationship with Jesus. That's how Saul becomes Paul. And that's all you need. Your, your training principal might say you need a songbook. That's debatable. Apparently you got apps. You can get there somehow. You will take up your cross and his holy armor and march on. I have an exclamation mark right there. I should have said it bigger. 
and you will march on. You will battle with rulers and authorities of this dark world and against the forces of evil. Remember what Romans 8.37 says, that you are more than conquerors. You don't need a cape. You've got something better. We call it a uniform. This uniform gets me places you wouldn't believe. Even discounts at the airport. I've walked into hospitals like I'm the president. They never ask twice. If you just walk with authority and fast, no one, no one will ever question you. Don't look to the left nor to the right. Just look straight ahead. They will get out of your way. We sing in the songbook this song. The day of victory's coming, tis coming by and by. When the cross of Calvary, all nations, they will what? Fly. We're soldiers in the army. We'll fight until we die. For the day of victory's coming by and by. That's all you need to know. They're going to try to teach you a few things in the next two years. And you should listen. You should apply yourself. But all you really need to have is that Bible and a songbook and your nice blue uniforms because that is the power of an officer, the word of God. He is your, always your true north. Are you ready for one more disappointment? I'm sorry. When you get your first appointment, there will not likely be a parade in your honor. Mostly, your arrival will be unnoticed, just below the radar, as it has been done many times before you. One of my favorite stories of all time uh, happened in Cape Town, South Africa. And if you've heard this before, I'm sorry. And by the way, the continent of Africa has just less than 50% of the Salvation Army on the, in the world. Now I want you to think about what I'm saying here. Not long after General Booth began taking over the world for Jesus, he determined that we must have Africa for Jesus. Now that's a pretty catchy little thing. Three words, Africa for Jesus. You could remember that. And so on a steamship, he placed Majors Simmons and Lieutenant Tiger. You've never heard of these people. Ananiases. It took a few weeks for them to leave London and get to Cape Town. And when they arrived, well, even really before they arrived, the media had found out that there's an invasion coming. They had heard there's an army on its way. Now, this is a country that was, had been attacked many times. And so when they heard there's an army on the way, they obviously were greatly concerned. And so sure enough, on the fateful day that the army came, the media shows up. The police force shows up. This is right at the port in Cape Town. And here comes the steamship. They could see it from quite a distance. And as it steamed into the port and tied up, people began getting off the ship. One after one, and one after second, third, fourth, fifth. I don't know how many people are on the ship. But somewhere toward the back end of the ship where the Salvation Army could afford to buy the tickets. Here came the three officers. They had no weapons except the Bible. I'm certain after a few weeks on the open sea, their uniforms were a mess. And they got off with their shaking legs and went down a plank and were greeted. Let me rephrase that. They were met by 
hostile people. In fact, their hostility soon erupted into laughter because there's no way an army of three could ever take over this city, let alone the continent of Africa. And so from somewhere in the back, a news reporter shouted the question, where is your army? Laughing while it was coming out. And the response probably was from the lieutenant. It's not sure who it was from. Let's give credit to the lieutenant. She probably never gets enough credit. I paraphrase it slightly. I call it the KIV, the Kelly Iglehart version. And the response back to the waiting crowd was, in your bars and in your brothels. That's where our army is. The army is in your bars and in your brothels. And today, almost half of the Salvation Army in the world was born from bars and brothels. Now, why do I bring that up? Ananias. You're, you're, you're going to find some people in your first core, probably. Just a few, probably. Probably no money. And the oil change on the car is going to be way past due. That's what you're going to find. And they're going to be your people. And you're going to love them. And you're going to disciple them. And they will in turn love you. But you see, those aren't only your people. It's the people who live on the fringes. It's the people who are stuck in the bars. It's the people who have been trafficked. Those are our people. And so if you want the kingdom of God to grow and your army to grow, you have to see the community as your parish. Thank God for local officers because it was local officers who made the difference in my life, who saw something that was nothing. But with God, all things are possible. When these good people here see you, maybe a few years ago, they probably thought, some maybe thought, there's no way. There's no way you could ever, but look at God. Look what God does, and he's still doing it. We are so proud of you. We're so happy for you. You are exactly where God would have you. Though there may be storms rage, you're in the middle of peace. I want to thank you for saying yes. God is so faithful. So I wonder tonight, who's impacted your life? What Ananias was there? And if, if you don't mind, I'd like to go one step farther. Whose Ananias are you? Who are you discipling? Who are you loving and caring for? Can you name one? Can you name two? I can say with that question, I'm standing here today by the grace of God and these very people who saw some kid from Utica, Kentucky, who grew up on a dusty little road and invested in me. And if you're not in that kind of a relationship, Salvation Army, I want to ask you to start it when you get back home. I recognize that many of you in here are, and perhaps even those who are watching from home. But I want to ask you tonight, I want you to pray about being an Ananias. Paul will get his moment in glory. And praise God. But Paul never came to me. It was Mary and Harold and Charlie and Martha. That's who. And that's, I believe, who you are. I'd like to invite you to uh, just to bow your head and close your eyes for a moment. As I said a moment ago, it's really been an outstanding Bible conference. And even as we begun this week, I ask you to seriously pray about this particular Bible conference event for you.
not for your neighbor, not for your spouse, your child, your grandchild, but for you. That God would do something new in you this week. And if you can't quite yet put your finger on that, you still have time. Here at the Salvation Army, every Salvation Army I've been on multiple continents in different countries, there's always an altar. And so we're going to open this altar up. And I want to follow a little sequence here, if you'll go with me. In a moment, we're going to sing uh, all in all. All that I am, sorry. But before we get there, I want to invite the champions of the session, 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 if you will come down to the altar. If you guys will just make your way. You can leave your things there. They'll be just fine. Just make your way. I know that the altar is a familiar place to you. They begin a sacred time now. They've sold it all. They've burned the boats. There's no bridges going back home. They're as far up in the tree and as far, far out on the limb as you can get. But isn't that a beautiful place to be in God's hands? I'm going to ask them in a moment to pray, and I want to ask you. If you're a divisional leader here, and these are your cadets, I want you to come. Just go ahead, make your way if you're a divisional leader. Even the ARC commanders, I think you're here. Some of these good people have come through some of our centers. Maybe you'd just like to put your hand on one of them. If you're a divisional candidate secretary and you're here this evening, I'd invite you to come. Divisional candidates. If you're the core officer or a family member of anyone here, and I don't care if you're fourth cousin removed, come on down. Because this is a sacred time. It's a precious time. Just come on down. Former Corps officer, if you're here, come on down. If you played a part at all, maybe you wrote a $100 check for a Bible. Maybe you had a spaghetti dinner in their honor. Maybe you dropped them off at the training college. I don't care. What I'm trying to create is a family. Because I want them to see the Ananiases around them. And in a moment, Josh is going to just start us in a, in a song. If you'd like to sing along, please feel free to. But I'd also, if you're still seated, if you would just maybe pray for somebody special here. Maybe someone from your division or your core. We're just going to have a, a, just a season of prayer beautiful time of prayer and then uh, in a few moments I'll say some more words Josh if you'll lead us let's pray together Salvation Army in Owensboro, Kentucky, where I was welcomed in. It was a family corps. It was a family corps. 
and we were all family, even if you weren't related. It was a body of Christ. This evening, I see in front of me a body of Christ. Beautiful people coming alongside those who've been sent, who were called and said, yes, I will go. Beautiful moment. But there may be this evening someone sitting here, and as we sing that song as Josh leads, is all that I am, it may just be that you can't really sing that song. That maybe there's something that you're holding back. I don't know what that might be, some secret sin. Your will, not his will. I don't know what you might be wrestling with this evening, and it doesn't matter from the youngest to the oldest. All that I am still counts, and that's all he wants. So this altar, this place of prayer is available to you. If God the Holy Spirit is speaking something new to you, he's pointing his finger at a certain place perhaps in your life that he would like to uh, be rededicated or cleaned up, please come and let's pray. We're going to sing this chorus one more time. And perhaps if God the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, won't you come this evening as we sing together? that I am all I can Captain Hinton, if she will, to make her way to the platform. But as she does, just a few days ago, a friend of mine who lives in Africa posted this comment, and it just resonated with me, and I think this generation. And the comment said something like this. We don't mind if it's hard as long as it's worth it. We don't care if the road is hard, but it, it must be worth it in the end. And this generation that I know doesn't mind hard. Sometimes they have a stigma, but don't you believe it? Fully committed, wonderful young people. We've seen it all summer long, and you've seen it before. And I just wonder this evening, if there's a young person within the sound of my voice, and I'm not saying here she is, Javon. If there's a young person within the sound of my voice who would raise their hand and say, all that I am, I'm willing. Ananias has spoken to my life. I just haven't said yes yet. And Lord, I'm not sure what the question is, but the answer is yes. And if the question is, can I commit myself to full-time service? Well, of course that answer is yes. We'd like for you to come up and join us in prayer. I'm going to invite Captain Hinton to leave this part, but uh, if you'll lead us on, please. And let's invite those who come who would like to come and pray. Thank you. And Commissioner, I can imagine uh, as I think about Ananias and when God gave him that task, it could have been easy for him to say no. He knew Saul of Tarsus. Yeah. He knew the Saul that was persecuting the Christians. Mm. He knew the Saul that was ready to bring them back into chains. That's right. And his answer could have been no, because I know the task that lies ahead of me. But he was willing, and he was obedient, because he knew who was going before him. He knew who had already paved the way. And he was obedient to what he was being called to do. 
and he went. Even though he may have been fearful, he may have been afraid, he may have been scared because he, he didn't really realize what was going to happen. I know this man. And you telling me to go to where he is? But he told him what to expect and what he was going to be doing when he got there. And he walked by faith and he went. And today as I look around the room, I see a lot of red out here. But we don't underestimate the power of God in this room tonight, amen? Because we know that God is still raising up people. He's still calling people to be Salvation Army officers. And God has been speaking to some people this very week. And some people have been wrestling with the call. You've been going back and forth and wondering, is this really what God is calling me to do? So we don't underestimate the power of God in this room tonight. And I want to invite you, if you're here and you've been thinking about officership, God may have put it on your heart. You've been thinking about it. Can I do it? Am I qualified? Am I good enough? Many of the champions of the mission may have said, I, I don't think I'm good enough. I can't do this. But God said, I got a plan and a purpose for your life. It don't matter what you've been through. It don't matter where you come from. I have a plan and a purpose for you because I have something that I want you to do. There's a world that needs to know about Jesus Christ, and I want you to go and tell the dying world about Christ. So if you're here today and you feel like God is calling you to be a Salvation Army officer, I just want you to come up and join me. If you feel like God has been speaking to your heart, telling you to do more, Come on. The Holy Spirit is moving. The power of God is moving. His voice is clear and is speaking. It don't matter what you've been through. It don't matter what you've come. And God say, I want to use you, and I want to use you for my glory. Stop wavering back and forth and do what I have called you to do. And the road may seem tough and the road may seem hard and you may not understand how I'm going to get there. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. We don't walk in fear because we know who goes before us. And God would open doors in our lives that no man can shut. And some of the champions of the mission will say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> And some of them are still figuring, trying to wonder, how am I here? But it was the power of God. And his promises are true. And we trust him and we believe him. Because God won't fail us. He won't leave us alone. He will never forsake us. God is with us. He is with us. He is with us. He is with us. And he will make a way where it seems to be no way. You have some powerful testimonies of God's grace, his mercy, his power, his redemption, his revival in your life, and God is not done with you. So we give him the glory tonight. We give him the honor tonight because he's worthy and everything belongs to him. So we say thank you. And if it's somebody else that's out there that want to join us, come up. Or if you don't want to come up, talk to your co-officer when you get back. Tell somebody about what God is doing in your life. So we glorify him and we give him honor tonight. We're grateful. We thank God for the 18. We pray for 50, but we're grateful for, for the 15, the 18, the 14, 14, 14, 18. I'm, I'm, I'm adding up all the sessions. I'm adding them up. I'm adding them up. We're, we, we thank God. We thank God for what we have. So, Father, we, we magnify your name tonight. We lift up on high your name tonight. Father, we say hallelujah. We give you the highest praise. Glory. We worship you. We adore you, Father. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for moving in this place. We thank you that people said yes. And we thank you for the people that are going to say yes. We're claiming it in advance because we know what kind of God you are. We thank you, God. We claim victory over the enemy right now. Father, we pray for the one that started a good work in us. We know that he's going to carry out into completion. Father, we thank you for what you're doing. Father, continue to call. May people continue to hear your voice. We thank you, Lord. Speak, God. Speak. 
for your servants are listening. Father, we pray for direction tonight. We pray for guidance tonight. Father, we pray that you will lead our paths. Father, if you don't go with us, we don't want to go. So, Father, we ask you to be with us. We want your presence. We want to feel it. And, Father, I thank you for all the ones that came up on the stage, Father. I pray that as they have that, uh, that desire to do more and to become Salvation Army officers, Father, I pray that they continue to walk in your will and your way for their life. Father, I pray that they will go back to their core or their centers and say, what's next? What's next for me? I don't want it to end here, but I want to do more because I want to be on this stage. I want to be at my welcome and then my commissioning. So, Father, again, we say thank you tonight. We glorify you. We magnify you. We lift up on high your name because you're a God that's worthy. We thank you for what you're going to continue to do. Bless our army, oh God. All over the world, bless our army. Bless us, God. May you be honored with us. May you honor us, Father. May you be pleased with our worship. May you be pleased with our service and all that we do for the building of the kingdom. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. And I want to, if you, if you all haven't signed up for 730 weekend, I want to take you out to the back in the hallway. I just want to talk to you, get some information, and we want to get you signed up for 730 weekend. Candidate secretaries, if you're here, I want you to meet me in the back. We want to get some people signed up for uh, 730 weekend, and we want to get their information because we want to follow up with you all. Amen. Yeah, you can come on up if you'd like, yes. I just want to take a moment to express our appreciation. We're not quite finished. We've, I think we've got a song and uh, a beautiful benediction here. But I just want, Major Ray Cooper, are you close by? Stand, Ray. There he is. And, yes, let's please... Uh, Show our appreciation to Major Cooper. Thank you for everything, Ray. We, uh, all that took place in a beautiful team, uh, Major Burks and Ken and Chris, and I'm, now I'm in trouble, I'm starting to name names. But you're, the whole team, um, Colonel Mark and Carolee, and you're part of this as well. Would you please, the Israels, let's show our appreciation to our program secretary. And Roberta somewhere, and thank you, Roberta, and all those that have um, taken play, part in this beautiful, beautiful week. Our youth band, we're so proud. Thank you, thank you. Our EBC staff, would the staff just stand so we can say hello and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the chief is standing beside me, so I'm going to move over. <laughs> She's got Stay something right good. Stay right here. We have good news. Okay. The offering tonight raised well over $3,000. Wow. Yes. Someone kindly matched that, and so the... The, it's well over $6,000 tonight, Amen. which brings us well over $50,000 oh, in God. gifts for these precious children yeah, in Nigeria. You. And thank we're so, so grateful much. to God. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Well... 
as much as we would love to stay here on the mountaintop, right? Our song that we're going to end with this evening says, Onward, tis our Lord's command. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. I'm going to invite you to stand as we sing our closing song before we have our benediction this evening. We have heard the joyful sound that Jesus saves. Tell the message all around. Bear the news to every land. I love the language of this song. Climb the steeps and cross the waves. Jesus saves. After an introduction from the band, we'll sing on four verses of this song. of the mission. Calling is lifetime commitments. But you're not alone. We all are going to walk together with you. Amen? Amen? Let's bow our head for benediction. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather here today to celebrate and mark the beginning of a new chapter in the life of the champions of the mission session, we are filled with gratitude for the opportunity and blessing you have bestowed upon them. We thank you for the calling, for the privilege of attending the Evangeline Booth College, and for the knowledge and wisdom that will be imparted to them in the coming years. We pray for these cadets as they embark on this journey of training. May their minds be open to new ideas, their hearts be receptive to growth, and their spirit be filled with the thirst for truth. Help them to approach their study with the diligence, curiosity, and humility, knowing that all truth comes from you. But more importantly, make them to all in for your calling. We ask for your protection and provision for these cadets. Keep them safe from harm, grant them good health, and surround them with the supportive friends and mentors. Help them to navigate 
the challenges they may face and give them the strength to persevere in the face of adversity. But finally, we pray that you would bless these cadets with the deepening of their faith during their time at this training college. May they grow in their relationship with you, seeking your guidance and trusting in your plans for their lives. Equip them to be a champion of the mission of your love, grace, and truth in their future endeavor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.